Hey, what's up? Uh, back from another video working on the RX-8 and it's, uh, it's pretty late, sometime after midnight. Um, daughter's out of school, so I don't have to actually wake up early anymore. So uh, she's getting some work done now uh, and uh, gonna continue in the morning. Right now, uh, all I'm doing is just installing my clutch kit. Um, I got my uh, file net torqued down, I believe over 250 foot pounds, which should be fine. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you see a couple of marks right here. Um, I marked this uh, starting at 150 foot pounds. And uh, after I was able to get it torqued down a little bit more, uh, uh, before anything, my uh, torque wrench only goes up to uh, 150 foot pounds. That's why I marked it at that. Then uh, after I got it torqued down a little bit more, I marked the uh, middle, whatever, so that's here to here. And then just now I was able to get it uh, from the starting point here, um, the original marks, to uh, this original mark over here, so it's like that. Um, I don't know what that would actually be, but I'm assuming at least 250 foot pounds, which should be uh, just fine. Uh, OEM spec is like 300 foot pounds, but yeah, I'm not gonna go buy a 350 foot pound uh, torque wrench. So this is what I'm going to go with, and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and install my clutch kit. Okay, so here's the clutch kit that I'm installing. So, uh, regardless of what it says up here, this is a uh, factory spec clutch. And the reason I'm installing a uh, factory clutch disc is because there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to install any upgraded clutch kit, uh, even if you're making up to 300 well, horsepower with the aftermarket turbo kit, yeah, uh, stock is more than sufficient enough. Um, this looks a little different than a regular stock clutch, but is in fact a uh, stock spec clutch. Also, fresh plate. It's got a uh, brand new throwout bearing, which uh, comes with the kit, Toyo brand, which is stock in a alignment tool with some of the stuff actually. Oh, hey, what do you know? I do have grease. Wonderful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on first and then I will uh, install the clutch kit. Okay, so just real quick, one thing I wanted to point out was uh, how to tell which way your clutch goes in. And uh, let's see, you wanna look for a mark like this. So T slash M side means a transmission side. Let's see, on the other side, I don't think it actually has like a flywheel side. I think on the uh, the other clutch it did, but this one it doesn't. Yeah, uh, just look for that. And uh, that means with a car like this, clutch will be like this in the car. So uh, yeah, that, that's uh, kind of important because if you put it in backwards, you're gonna run into some issues. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's get to it. All right, so first thing you want to do is uh, take your little install tool thingy and just put it inside the uh, clutch splines. And then uh, you just want to put it in there, just like that. Then you want to get your uh, pressure plate. See, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to install this because whatever. But if you look at your flywheel, you're gonna have these little uh, dowels. And then you'll also have your, uh, your bolt holes. Let's see, give me a sec. Okay, so I just wanna double check before I say something stupid and wrong or both or whatever. But yeah, so the dowel holes are smaller slightly, but they are smaller than the uh, bolt holes. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's really important because it keeps the uh, pressure plate in place. Anyway, I have a uh, Racing Beat hardware kit that I'm going to be using. Um, let's see. So it comes with a bunch of these uh, little washers and see grade 10.9 bolts. Uh, I did buy some other bolts uh, thinking that I needed them, but I actually don't. So, and these are grade 8. So, yeah, these are these are better. So I'm gonna go ahead, use these, and uh, finish installing this uh, this clutch kit. 
Okay, so I didn't record any of that uh, just because it was a huge pain in the dick. Because uh, the way you install these is, let's see, just a bolt that goes through, put a, uh, if it's a copper washer, I'm not sure, but one on each side, see right there, focus, and uh, each bolt does have a uh, blue Loctite on it. So I don't uh, have any doubts in this at all. Um, I don't think it'll have any issues. Is uh, the 12 is doing fine uh, without it being torqued properly? But uh, yeah, it feels like a 40 foot pound, so it should be fine. Anyway, uh, that, that's mainly what I wanted to do tonight. Uh, can get that grease off of there. Um, the other thing I did was uh, install my. Uh, aftermarket oil pressure sensor thing because uh, I am going to be installing a Pro Sport uh, Evo series gauges in this car and uh, so one of my uh, videos before I went to Texas was showing where this little port was uh, it's where you'd normally find the oil filter pedestal on every every rotary before the Series 2 RX-8 on the Series 2 RX-8 Oil filters down here and this is just well it's just there but it's still an oil line and there is a, a factory 1 8 mpt uh port right there so i just went went ahead and took advantage of it took the plug out and put the sensor in but that's basically where i'm gonna leave it tonight and uh yeah this car is ready to be put back together now the clutch kit's installed yay Three days later. Okay, so it's a new day or night because it's like nine something now. But anyway, I'm uh, I'm doing more stuff, and I didn't really get a lot actually done on the car, but I did do some stuff yesterday, and I'll show you what. So Dom uh, went over to my storage with me and helped me get my nineteen thousand mile trans out. So that's here now, as well as my nineteen thousand mile drive shaft. Now, the other drive shaft's just over there. There is absolutely no reason why I couldn't use that and still be just fine. But I have that, so why the fuck not? Anyway, uh, let's see. Last night, last night I uh, just spent a little bit of time cleaning out the bell housing and the uh, the clutch fork thingy. And also uh, took some steel wool to the input shaft and the uh, surface that the throughout bearing rides on. Okay, so just a uh, really quick basic rundown of how this shit works because I myself didn't know things at one time. So for those of you watching who also don't know things at this time, oh, now you can know things. So this is obviously your clutch fork. And let's see right here, you'll see a little uh, you know, piece of wire thing. I, I forget the exact name of this. But anyway, uh, this goes out and then it goes around the back of this little guy. And that is what holds the uh, fork in place. And it actually, yeah, it's called the pivot ball. So pivot ball retainer, I think that would be called. And uh, yeah, it just keeps the fork uh, stationary right here. So it can pivot back and forth on it. And of course you throw out bearing, which goes on like this going on. See the fork goes into it and it just goes back and forth. Let's see, and this uh, the reason why it's called a bearing is it has a, a bearing that goes onto the uh, the teeth of the pressure plate, and it spins with the pressure plate and stuff like that. And when they go bad, that's that's when you get the uh, annoying chirping noise, and uh, that that means your throttle bearing's going bad. But this is a brand new Koyo. Um, it there is a possibility of brand new ones being bad. That's happened before, but. For the most part, they're actually pretty good. And, well, it's the OEM one, uh, Koyo brand. So that's the uh, that's the one that I'm gonna stick with. Anyway, I'm gonna show show it all installed and show you how it works that way. I know, just one more thing. Don't forget to uh, lube your surfaces that you see right here. So I also did the uh, inside of the uh, throat bearing and also the uh, pivot ball and the surface that the throat bearing rides on. Um, I don't think the pivot ball really needs it, but it had it when I took it off, so I, I put more grease on. Uh, the grease that I'm using, uh, it's like a high temp, high temp grease, uh, 540 Fahrenheit uh, rating. 
Uh, yeah, this isn't ever gonna get anywhere close to that. And if it is, then you have you have bigger problems to worry about. But um, yeah, I just put it on, on the surfaces. And what I also did is, uh, see, so polished it with the steel wool. I, I think I might've said something about that already, but polished this and this. Uh, with steel wool as well as the uh, the output shaft thing. I think that's what that's called for the uh, drive shaft. Okay, so I'm gonna install this shit and I uh, go from there. Okay, so I'm under the car and obviously my transit right behind me. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, doing this a little bit sketchier. Oh, I guess not as sketchy as I did in the uh, RX-7 over there uh, where I just lifted it up myself or actually I don't remember how I did that but I, I think I got it on my chest and just like lifted it up or something oh something like that but anyway the way I'm doing this is I just got it on the jack right there just uh one point and then I'm just gonna lift it up from here and try to line it up the best I can and then uh you know just get a couple bolts in there to secure it and uh yeah hopefully that goes well if not then I'll just stop here and you know, wait for, uh, you know, for someone to come over and help me, uh, so I can lift it up and line it up. Cause yeah, I, I don't want to fuck this up because that'd be bad. I, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to record any of this, uh, just cause it's a huge pain in the dick. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do time lapse or something, but, uh, well, we'll see from there. Okay. Now that hell's over. Trans is in, bolted up. I just have to tighten one bolt on top, which is the biggest pain in the dick. I uh, just got, just about got the uh, slave cylinder tightened up and see these clips are kind of broken. So I think I'm gonna just zip tie these to the bracket. Also, uh, this trans didn't have this bracket on. Uh, I don't know if I took that off before or what, but I mean, there's bolt holes for it there, so. Put that on, somewhere for that to mount to. And uh, yeah, that, that was not fun at all. So what I ended up doing, uh, fluid kept leaking out of here, filled up the glove that was supposed to catch it. So I just took the old drive shaft and put it in, used that as the uh, sill, I guess. Worked pretty well, nothing leaked out. And uh, let's see, I just jacked up the back end of it and I put it in from the front. Definitely not the way to do it. You should use a, a trans jack. I don't have a trans jack, so that's why I use this. And whew, I spent like the last hour trying to get this bullshit in. But anyway, it's in. Uh, I'm just going to get stuff bolted up, uh, put in my uh, low mile starter that came with this trans, and start working on getting everything bolt it up and maybe if uh if i'm lucky get this car uh the clutch line bled oh god damn i just hit my elbow and get this car running back on the road again oh fuck i'm done for now you stole my heart of gold Silver soul Can you dig any deeper now? I gave you all I own Put you on this golden throne But I'm a little stronger now You casting on my promises You know I'm too gentle 
Okay, so the uh, car is pretty much mechanically put back together. Uh, everything's bolted down, tightened down to where it should be. Uh, let's see, drive shaft bolts are probably should have torqued, but I did not. Plus my uh, torque wrench is kind of big, so yeah. Whatever, send it, whatever happens, happens, and I will uh, eat shit later for it if uh, something does go wrong. But anyway, uh, well, of course, trans is done. I already told you about that. I uh, just need to get the cross member on, get the uh, oil pan, oil belly pan thing on, and then uh, let's see what else am I doing? Oh, yeah, got to top off the trans. Um, some fluid leaked out, and it also leaked out over my storage, too. So I do know it's a little tiny bit low on trans fluid. Although it could probably run perfectly fine on that because I'm pretty sure my uh, other trans is running low and my dumbass just never checked it. But anyway, gonna wrap up the top, uh, top it off and, oh yeah, gotta bleed the, uh, the clutch and probably the brakes. Cause I do need to do the brakes cause the reservoir is shared between the clutch line and the brake lines and that's stupid. All right, enough blabbing, time to work. Okay, so clutch lines bled. Um, let's see, I, I think just for now, I'm gonna leave the brakes. So I knew this before, but I completely forgot, just like I forgot how to take apart a center console, stuff like that. But uh, let's see, even though this is the uh, same reservoir for the brake and uh, clutch master, whatever, uh, the reservoir itself is split into two. Uh, if you look right here, there's a split going right down there. So uh, as I was bleeding it, only this was going down, but this was staying uh, full where it should be. So I'm gonna do that another day, probably do you know another video on that. And uh, so you get the rest of this stuff together and then uh, start the car and see if it can turn the wheels. Actually, should probably make sure that those tires are off the ground. Yeah, because monster trucking right here, Oh yeah, that, that's touching. <laughs> uh, but yeah, pretty much I'm, I'm completely done. Uh, everything down there is pretty much done. Oh, yes, I do have to uh, top off the, uh, the trans fluid. Uh, I can do that really quick. And uh, the way I'm gonna do that, instead of like pumping it into the side, I'm just gonna go from the top because you can do that. Actually, shit, I should clean that out too. Fuck is all that? Uh oh. <laughs> I'll clean all that out and then do that. Do all that and then you know, we'll go for a uh, go for a start and uh, hopefully a drive. Okay, so now everything's assembled and whatever, and uh, I don't have the center console all reassembled yet, but uh, all the under tray stuff is all there. And uh, get it off the jack stands. I should probably get all that from under there too. But uh, yeah, after that, then I'll get off jack stands and then we'll go for a first start and uh, maybe uh, drive or something. I don't know. But before I drive it, I uh, do need to get cleaned up because my clothes are fucking nasty and I don't want to get my seats all nasty and stuff like that. So yeah, do that. back on the ground so let's go ahead and give it his first start uh, I, I don't think there will really be any issues but whatever started anyway okay so just barely turn it on to the on position so it can initialize stuff and whatever let's go ahead and start up
initialize things. All right, so the, that should go away after driving it for a bit, but the uh, DSC flashing, that doesn't go away until you do what I just did. We're gonna go ahead and reinitialize the windows. So the way you do that, okay, the way you do that is you just roll them both down at the same time, roll them back up, roll them down. I don't think you need to do it that many times, but I do it anyway. And that will initialize your automatic windows. Okay, I guess it didn't do it. Because uh, all RX-8s have uh, automatic windows in both doors. Uh, car throttle, I, their videos that they did on the RX-8, uh, where you said that they don't have automatic windows. Yeah, he's wrong. Uh, I just had to reinitialize him, which he did not. That was not reinitialized yet. This was not reinitialized yet. Yeah, you just keep rolling them up and down until they reinitialize. Uh, it usually works a lot faster than this. Oh, hey, there it goes. All right, now they're reinitialized. Woo! Yeah, car runs pretty much exactly the same. I, I don't see any differences from before, except of course that needs to uh, go away. A uh, vacuum leak right about here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what that is. There's like build up residue there, so need to get another fitting for that. I, I don't know why it's like that to begin with. Also, need to add a uh, oil cash can. Don't know why I didn't do that before, but uh, either way, car runs and uh, yeah, that's, that's good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just let it warm up after it warmed up completely then I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, shut it off and uh, I, I guess we could do one more thing okay so just to go ahead and test out the uh, new trans I'm gonna go put in first and let it inch forward a little oh yeah <laughs> e-brake was up my bad Okay, it moved, so I, I guess the clutch swap was successful, but I'm not gonna do anything more than move it like a couple inches. But yeah, it was under its own power again. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it warm all the way up. Which shouldn't take too long, probably like five minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna go and uh, you know, get cleaned up and stuff.